Dinosaurs have always hogged the spotlight, giant roaring beasts towering over the earth. T-Rex, Spinosaurus, Argentinosaurus, the very names inspire awe. But what if we told you the most dangerous creature in Earth's history wasn't a dinosaur at all? What if the real nightmare, the true apex monster, came after the last dinosaur had turned to dust? We've been sold a story that the age of giants ended with the Cretaceous extinction, that life became smaller, weaker, tamer. But what if that's completely wrong? What if nature never stopped building monsters, only this time it hid them in plain sight? Sure, the Jurassic was packed with 80-foot-long herbivores and 9-ton carnivores, but does size alone make a creature dangerous? What about intelligence, adaptability, cruelty? How do we even measure danger? Is it about brute force or domination over ecosystems? Over time itself? And here's a deeper question. If dinosaurs ruled the land for 165 million years, what creature ruled longer? What killer survived multiple extinction events, crossed epochs, and continues to terrorize to this day, or left behind a legacy so violent it shaped evolution itself. The truth is we've overlooked countless deadly animals that lived alongside and long after the dinosaurs, from sky-shredding birds to colossal snakes, death-dealing fish to mega-predators on hooves. Nature didn't downsize. It got smarter, stealthier, sometimes even more brutal. Stay tuned. 1. Titanoboa, the monster that replaced the dinosaurs. Imagine a time just after the apocalypse. The sky darkened, forests decimated, and the mighty dinosaurs gone. But in the steaming swamps of what is now Columbia, a new terror was coiling into existence. Its name? Titanoboa carigenensis, the largest snake to ever slither across the earth. Forget what you think you know about big snakes. This wasn't an anaconda or a python. Titanoboa could reach over 40 feet in length, longer than a city bus and weigh more than 2,500 pounds. If it reared up, it would stand taller than a giraffe. Its body was thick as an oil drum, and its grip, crushing enough to snap bone, paralyze lungs, and squeeze the life out of prey in complete silence. Discovered in 2009 at the Carajon coal mines, Titanoboa lived around 60 million years ago, during the Paleocene epoch. This was a chaotic era, Earth was still reeling from the asteroid that ended the age of dinosaurs. But while the world mourned the extinction of giants like T-Rex, nature was already crafting a new breed of monster. And here's the twist, Titanoboa thrived because the planet was hot. In the greenhouse climate of post-extinction Earth, global temperatures soared, and with no ice at the poles, equatorial regions became ovens. For cold-blooded creatures like snakes, this meant one thing, growth. Reptiles could soak up ambient heat to fuel bigger bodies, faster metabolisms, and expanded territory. But was Titanoboa a mindless predator like the movie monsters it resembles? Not exactly. Paleontologists suggest it wasn't an apex predator in the traditional sense. Its preferred prey? Giant fish. In the swampy rivers and lakes of Paleocene South America, Titanoboa lurked like a living nightmare beneath the surface. Silent invisible, and lethal. With one lightning-fast lunge cow, it could pull a fish the size of a man into the murky depths and crush it into silence. No mammal of the time could challenge it. There were no lions, tigers, or bears, just small, scurrying proto-mammals and a few mid-sized crocodile cousins, none of which could match the size or power of Titanoboa. In the power vacuum left behind by the dinosaurs, this serpent didn't just survive, it reigned. But perhaps the most disturbing part? Titanoboa wasn't a fluke, it was a preview, a glimpse of what the Earth can produce under the right conditions. Extreme heat, unchecked ecosystems, and open niches. If the climate ever mirrors the Paleocene again, could creatures like this make a comeback? Titanoboa is more than a fossil, it's a warning. Because while dinosaurs roared across the land, this thing didn't need to roar. It just had to wait, coiled in silence, hidden in shadow, until it struck. Second Megalania, the venomous dragon that hunted humans. When we think of Ice Age predators, we picture saber-toothed cats, dire wolves, or towering mammoths. But in ancient Australia, one of the apex killers wasn't a mammal at all. It was a cold-blooded, scaly giant that could rival any nightmare Hollywood has ever imagined. Meet Megalania a super-sized monitor lizard that once stalked the open forests and grasslands of Pleistocene Australia. 
estimates of its size vary wildly, from 15 to a staggering 26 feet in length. That's more than double the size of a modern Komodo dragon, its closest living cousin. Even on the lower end, Megalania would have been the largest venomous vertebrate to ever live. Yes, venomous. Based on its relationship to Komodo dragons and other monitor lizards, scientists now believe Megalania didn't just kill with brute force. It may have used venom to weaken prey over time, delivering a bite that wouldn't kill instantly, but would ensure death came slowly, painfully. The venom likely stopped blood from clotting, while bacteria-filled wounds festered, turning minor injuries into fatal ones. Its teeth, curved, serrated, and made for ripping flesh, were built for holding on to struggling victims. And unlike big cats or wolves, Megalania didn't need to chase its prey for miles. A single bite may have been enough. After that, it could stalk from the shadows, or simply wait, because in the end, the venom would do the dirty work. What did it hunt? Likely anything it wanted. Giant wombats, flightless birds, even early human ancestors who had begun to colonize the continent. In fact, there's compelling evidence that humans and Megalania overlapped, making it one of the only truly monstrous reptiles our species may have faced in the wild. And here's the chilling part. We don't know exactly when Megalania vanished. Was it hunted into extinction by humans? Did climate change doom it? Or could remote pockets have survived longer than we think? Megalania wasn't just a lizard, it was a dragon. Real, venomous, and terrifying. And for tens of thousands of years, it was one of the deadliest things breathing on land. 3. Autodus Megalodon, the apex predator that devoured whales. Think T-Rex was terrifying? Think again. Because long after the last dinosaur had vanished from the earth, the oceans were ruled by something far bigger, far faster, and arguably far scarier. Its name was Autodus Megalodon, and it wasn't just the biggest shark to ever exist, it was one of the most powerful predators in Earth's history. During the late Cretaceous, the largest sharks maxed out around 25 feet long, but by 23 million years ago, something monstrous had evolved. Megalodon, its name literally means giant tooth, could stretch anywhere from 34 to 52 feet in length, and possibly more. That's as long as a school bus with a bite force more powerful than a T-Rex. Its jaws could open wide enough to swallow a grown adult whole, no chewing required. But how did it get so big? New research has revealed an unsettling clue. Megalodon may have been cannibalistic before it was even born. Like today's sand tiger sharks, it's likely that the largest megalodon embryos would consume their siblings inside the womb, eliminating competition and giving themselves a monstrous head start in size and aggression. That's right, right before they ever swam in open water, they were already killers. And once born, their menu only got more terrifying. Megalodon didn't feed on fish. It fed on whales. Blubbery, air-breathing, warm-blooded whales. Paleontologists have found fossilized whale bones with massive bite marks, neatly punctured ribs, shattered vertebrae, all matching the tooth pattern of Megalodon. These weren't scavenged remains, these were precision strikes. What makes this even more chilling is the fact that we only have their teeth. The rest of their skeletons, made of cartilage, didn't fossilize. So for all we know, Megalodon may have been even larger than we estimate. It ruled the seas for over 20 million years. And while it's extinct now, one question always lingers in the back of the mind. If Megalodon once existed, could something like it return? 4. Paraceratherium, the mammal that dwarfed all others. It didn't have fangs, claws, or venom. It wasn't a predator. But Paraceratherium was so massive, so towering, that it didn't need any weapons. Its size alone made it untouchable. This gargantuan beast, also known as Paracaratherium bugtiens, roamed the ancient plains of eastern Eurasia between 34 and 23 million years ago, and it's often considered the largest land mammal to have ever lived. Picture a rhino, now stretch its neck like a giraffe's, enlarge it until its shoulders rise 15 feet above the ground, taller than an adult elephant's head, and its neck reaches out over six feet long, perfect for plucking leaves from the tallest trees. Now give it the bulk to match, this herbivore likely weighed over 33,000 pounds, as much as four African elephants combined. Despite its somewhat slender appearance, this animal was no fragile giant. It moved with the unstoppable momentum of a freight train, 
and was simply too large for most predators to even attempt an attack. Even the wolf-sized carnivores of the time gave it a wide berth. But that didn't mean it lived without danger. Fossil evidence suggests that 33-foot-long crocodiles, yes, crocodiles bigger than a bus, may have attacked young or weakened individuals, possibly lying in wait along rivers where these giants came to drink. Just imagine the ambush. A massive croc launching from the water to clamp down on the leg of the largest land mammal in history. It's the kind of prehistoric showdown few could survive. And yet, Paraceratherium thrived in its time, not because it was aggressive or deadly, but because it mastered size. In a world of evolving predators and shifting climates, it grew so large that almost nothing could challenge it. Its extinction is still a mystery. Climate change? Shifting vegetation? Or did early ancestors of modern humans play a role? Whatever the cause, the world once hosted a creature so enormous, it made mammalian carnivores look like house pets, and it didn't need teeth or claws to dominate. 5. Barina Suquis, the crocodile that hunted on land. When you think of a crocodile, you probably picture it lurking in the murky water, eyes just above the surface, waiting to explode into motion. But what if I told you that one of the most terrifying crocodilians ever wasn't an ambush predator at all? What if it hunted on land, like a lion, not a log? Meet Barina Suchis arvaloi, a massive land-walking crocodile that once dominated the ancient landscapes of South America. Between 55 and 15 million years ago, in regions that are now Argentina, Peru, and Venezuela, this beast was top of the food chain, and not in the way you'd expect. Discovered in 2007, Barina Suchis belonged to a lineage of crocodiles called Cebacids, creatures that evolved during the Cretaceous, but exploded in diversity after the dinosaurs disappeared. Unlike modern crocs that rely on stealth and water-based ambush, Barina Suchis was built for the chase, with long, powerful limbs and a high skull filled with flattened, serrated, blade-like teeth. It didn't wait in rivers, it patrolled the land. These weren't ordinary crocodile teeth. They were designed for slicing flesh, not gripping or drowning prey. In fact, their teeth looked more like those of carnivorous dinosaurs than their modern, fish-crushing cousins. This wasn't a reptile trying to blend in with mammals. It was a throwback to a prehistoric killing style, but with the cold-blooded patience of a reptilian hunter. At over 20 feet long and weighing up to 3,000 pounds, Barina Suchus rivaled today's saltwater crocodiles in size. But what made it especially terrifying was its adaptability. Fossils have been found in different environments and time periods, meaning this creature didn't just survive, it thrived for tens of millions of years. At a time when massive meat-eating mammals were trying to rule the land, Barina Suchus outcompeted them. It was faster than most expected, more agile than any crocodile today and its bite was the stuff of legend. Forget hiding in the water, this croc came for you on land. 6. Demetrodon, the apex predator that wasn't a dinosaur, but closer to you. At first glance, Demetrodon looks like a dinosaur straight out of a sci-fi movie. A scaly beast with a sail rising from its spine, prowling through swampy prehistoric landscapes. You'd be forgiven for thinking it was just another reptilian relic from the age of dinosaurs. But here's the twist. Demetrodon wasn't a dinosaur at all. In fact, it's more closely related to us than to anything that ever flew, stomped, or roared in the Mesozoic. Demetrodon lived around 295 to 272 million years ago, during the Permian period, tens of millions of years before the first dinosaurs even appeared. It belonged to a group known as Synapsids, ancient creatures that would eventually give rise to mammals. Yes, Demetrodon is on our side of the family tree, so what made it so special? For starters, that distinctive sail on its back, formed by elongated neural spines, wasn't just for show. It may have been used for thermoregulation, helping the animal warm up faster in the morning sun, or cool down when temperatures rose. Others suggest it could have been used for intimidation or mating displays, like a biological billboard of dominance. But the real evidence of its mammalian ties lies in its skull and teeth. Demetrodon had a single temporal fenestra, a hole behind the eye socket where strong jaw muscles attached. Dinosaurs and reptiles had two, we mammals also have just one. And its teeth? Not rows of uniform spikes like most reptiles, but specialized teeth for different tasks, cutting, tearing, slicing. That's where its name comes from. 
Dimetrodon, meaning two measure tooth. This creature was the top predator of its time, hunting amphibians, fish, and early reptiles with a deadly bite and surprising speed. Despite its ancient age, Dimetrodon represents a crucial evolutionary step, a prototype of what mammals would eventually become. So next time you see this sail-backed beast in a museum or documentary, don't call it a dinosaur, call it an ancestor. So, after everything we've seen, from sail-backed mammal ancestors, to land-walking crocodiles, from whale-eating sharks to rhino-sized giants, what was the most dangerous creature of all time? The truth is, there's no simple answer. Was it Titanoboa, with its bus-sized body and crushing grip that turned prey into pulp? Was it Megalodon, the underwater assassin that swallowed whales whole and may have started killing before it was even born? Or maybe Barina Sukus, the croc that didn't hide in swamps, but hunted across open land like a four-ton Komodo dragon on steroids? Each of these monsters ruled in their own time, in their own way, but the point isn't to crown a single killer, it's to shatter the myth that dinosaurs were the beginning and end of prehistoric terror. They weren't. Life on Earth didn't shrink after the asteroid. It adapted. It evolved. And sometimes, it created creatures even more terrifying than what came before. But here's the most chilling twist of all. The most dangerous creature to ever walk the planet is still alive. It's intelligent. It's adaptable, it's spread to every continent, it reshapes ecosystems, topples food chains, even wipes out entire species, sometimes without realizing it. That creature is us, Homo sapiens. We outlived the monsters, then we became them. So the next time someone tells you dinosaurs were the biggest, baddest creatures to ever live, remind them of what came after. Remind them that evolution never stopped producing nightmares, and some of the scariest things that ever lived didn't need claws, fangs, or scales, they just needed time 